Hi, I uh, have made a video in a long time, been a bit busy, but I read this book that I thought it was interesting to uh, share some thoughts about it with you. The uh, book is called Sync by Stephen Strogatz, the Chaos Theory Professor, and it's about spontaneous organization. Now, first I'm gonna tell a little bit introduction about chaos theory. Most chaos theory books begin with uh, Newton and his clockwork universe. Uh, basically he said I have found the laws of motion of any mass and these laws will tell you exactly given the current state what will be the future state. And an exponent of that was uh, Laplace, who said that he could determine the future perfectly from the current state if he had enough information and computing power. Um, they usually proceed then by uh, saying that uh, there be there came cracks in the in the deterministic edifice and his cracks was for example the three body problem so Newton could prove for two bodies exactly that they would move in an ellipse but for three bodies he could not calculate it and they could not calculate it for 200 years until um, a French mathematician called uh, Poincaré proved it was impossible to calculate it <coughs> now you can simulate it uh, by taking small discrete time steps and then uh, assuming um, laws of motion you calculate uh, the very, uh, very over a very small, small time period what the next state is and then from the next state calculate again the next state but you cannot come up with an analytical um, description of uh, the movement, the function. <clears throat> um, so you cannot even prove that the solar system is stable. It could be, it could be uh, unstable. Um, nevertheless, it it proved pretty stable, and um, you can use Newton's laws to calculate back in time. Uh, for example when an eclipse occurred so if you read some historical document uh, that describes that there was an eclipse then you can say oh it was in Egypt uh, around a little bit uh, after year zero um, that must have been this exact date that the author was talking about you can also go deterministically from the present given the, cur given the rules to the future and calculate when a new eclipse will occur and this took away many of uh, the supernatural feelings about comets appearing for example when Halley comets, uh, Halley, Halley's comet appeared then it was a bad omen but yeah if you know it comes back every year, 76 years or something then uh, you know yeah, it's, it's not so supernatural anymore, it's quite predictable and uh, yeah, the fear has gone away. Um, <clears throat> another crack they talk about is um, uh, Lorenz. Lorenz was someone who tried to make weather predictions with uh, first computers uh, running on uh, vacuum tubes still. And it were very simple models and he gave it some input and tried to calculate uh, the weather some uh, time ahead but he noticed that when he reran the program with the same data uh, that he after a while got different outcomes and he wondered why that was and it turned out to have a cause of course because it is just uh, deterministic um, the cause was that he started with not exactly the same numbers. There was some round of error uh, that the, the the printer had made, and um, when he re-entered the data, he didn't take that 
hidden precision into account and that caused a different weather prediction. Uh, he thought then how futile is my action actually because if I have maybe even this simple model is very sensitive to the starting conditions and it means that if you measure temperature with only a very small error in it you cannot uh, you get a wildly different weather prediction. Oh, how valuable is this weather prediction then? And he concluded that you cannot predict the weather in the longer term. And he generalized that to you cannot uh, make any prediction about all oh, systems uh, become chaotic. And it is indeed true also even for the uh, solar system I think if you go five million years ahead of uh, in, uh, ahead of time or back in time, uh, you will the inaccuracies of your data will have accumulated so much that you cannot make a valid prediction anymore about where the planets will be in that time. Now he started to ventilate that ID and and that accumulated into the yeah well known chaos theory uh, statement that if a butterfly flaps its wings in Japan it can cause a tornado a month later in Ohio and um, von Neumann, it's a brilliant uh, mathematician uh, worked for the government said well that is a problem for prediction but my employer uh, which is the US government is mainly interested in weather modification, not in prediction. So I'm not so bothered with that. And the idea, uh, of course, of the government is that if we only could have uh, a carefully placed uh, butterfly flap somewhere and we could cause a tornado somewhere else, then uh, we have a kind of a weapon to project our power around the world and it would be jolly great never abused that. Um, but I think the, the thinking error made in that is that if you cannot make a prediction and you can prove that um, then you can also not engage in weather modification because yeah maybe there is a case that some butterfly flap somewhere would uh, is crucial to a tornado coming into existence but you don't know where that is because you cannot predict it you have to test your hypothesis uh, if you you try something and you have to test if it works if it would work and if you can't do that then you don't know where to start so it always goes back and forward in time uh, determinism uh, it is not uh, if it's a it's a problem to go forward you cannot say well it's not a problem because I go back <coughs> it's the same problem and von Neumann I think did not realize that or didn't want to realize because if he had said that yeah it's all futile then uh, he would have lost his budget probably now this is an effect that holds very uh, general so uh, you can say that any system where you know the rules and the principles of operation and the state of the elements uh, about which these principles describe something then the calculation if it is very sensitive to initial conditions will end up with a huge error a small error in the beginning uh, can lead to a, a very big error in the end. Uh, it's the same if you go on a trip and you, you set your initial course slightly wrong, you can up, end up in a completely different place. And yeah, this has been known for a long time, of course, uh, even in folklore. Uh, this is recorded in, uh, for example, the poem For Want of a Nail. For want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost. For want of a rider, the battle was lost. For want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. And all for the want of a horseshoe nail. So this 
already states that a very small thing can have very big consequences and maybe this was recited by some peasants trying to uh, get some favor from the king saying wait a second if you don't give me this little favor that might have big consequences for your kingdom now if you read further on in uh, chaos uh, books then um, they always further down the road acknowledge that chaos is deterministic uh, the situation on time t determines exclusively the situation on term t plus one but um, chaotic systems are very sensitive to initial conditions so it is determinism sensitive to initial conditions that is what chaos is so so far about chaos theory uh, however this being said that many events in nature show a remarkable tendency to sync up and it both happens in uh, living and non-living things and that is where this book uh, is about this book called sync and to name a couple of examples you have for example fireflies that flash uh, in huge numbers in unison an equal frequency and equal phase uh, the moon's orbital time is locked with the earth's orbital time so you only see one side of the moon uh, always uh, women's periods uh, when they live together lock up in the same they get their period at the same time pacemaker cells in your heart uh, fire in unison and even uh, in internet routers for example in 1994 they discovered that they got into a spontaneously traffic pulsation so uh, they they all started pushing through traffic in unison and the books give book gives a wonderful quote of Philip Laurent um, I think this is uh, yeah made me uh, smile because he claimed that uh, when, he, when he was told about these fireflies in uh, faraway Asia that uh, flashed synchronously that he said it was impossible in principle and um, according to him this was because these fireflies did not have a leader and they had not been taught to be obedient and take orders and this is this is uh, kind of funny because it it shows you how difficult it is to break away of your own bias and and your own framework in which you grew up uh, when you try to explain uh, the nature of reality and uh, he he did not but he could have added to that also that these fireflies uh, require to have free will to do this and um, because one firefly sends out a pulse to change the frequency of another firefly to bring it in in sync <clears throat> and I don't know if you remember uh, Molyneux's argument for example for free will is that uh, if I make an argument against him that free will does not exist then by making that argument I implicitly agree that he can change his mind otherwise I would not make that argument and by agreeing that he can change his mind I would somehow also uh, imply that he has free will but that same argument goes for the fireflies so you could say uh, if you flash at me you acknowledge I can change my flashing and that I behave uh, that needs, means you acknowledge I have free will to change my flashing that means that fireflies would have free will uh, and this is a dangerous path to go on because you can even see this uh, syncing up with uh, different metronomes locking or clocks locking uh, immaterial things they would then by the same argument also have free will they can change each other's uh, clock rate and uh, this was found out first by the Dutch physicist Christian Huygens uh, who tried to participate in a contest to make a very accurate clock for latitude determination so you could navigate the globe uh, more easily 
and he, he invented the pendulum, pendulum clock in 1656. And he made two of them to compare how accurate they were, what the error margin was. And he was uh, sick home one day and he had the clocks hanging on the wall and they first ticked out of sync and then after a while they were in sync. And he concluded from that that they were inaccurate because uh, otherwise they would stay exactly out of sync the way they were in the beginning. And he was disappointed by that and he tried to find the cause. And as you know, every human being tries to find the cause of things because every human being basically acknowledges that things, nature is deterministically and there is a cause for anything, for everything. Um, <clears throat> He found out that it was the coupling because they were both on the same wall. Um, they sent the little vibrations through that wall, and that caused the other clock to get, uh, or caused them to tick in unison. And he was disappointed, and he threw away the idea of making a, a very accurate clock with his pendulum clock. And there are some, some uh, wonderful videos on the internet and I'll try to put one in here that show the spontaneous synchronization of a bunch of metronomes. Now Peskin um, made a conjecture that proves that sync will always occur for two pulse coupled oscillators, that it is not something that that happens <coughs> only only uh, rarely or under special conditions but it is bound to happen and the proof for multiple oscillators was given later by Wiener and Kuramoto the suspicions was there already much longer because you can you can build things with uh, multiple oscillators and they will go into um, into unison uh, synchronized oscillation. Um, you can do that with all kinds of things. You could even think of something like uh, you have a, a flush toilet and you, ha you take a whole bunch of flush toilets and you let one toilet flush into the, the container, water container of the next one and because of the flushing the, the next toilet will get a lot of water and then also reach the point of flush and flush in the next one and if you build this kind of plumbing oscillator thing and you start the whole thing off then if you wait a while they will end up all flushing in in unison so they've seen it experimentally but uh, it took a while to to get the proof that this was inevitably uh, so um, <coughs> I like to read uh, uh, something from the book about this synchronization, about these ex experiments that show that that multiple uh, nonlinear oscillators always get into sync. It says in cases like this, synchronization occurs cooperatively. Once a few oscillators happen to sync by chance, their combined coherent shouting stood out above the background and exerted a stronger effect on all others. This nucleus recruited other oscillators towards them, which made the nucleus even larger and amplified its signal. The resulting positive feedback process led to a runaway accelerated outbreak of synchrony, in which many oscillators rushed to join the emerging consensus. Some oscillators nonetheless remained unsynchronized because their natural frequencies were too extreme for the coupling to pull them in. The end result was a population split into a synchronized pack and a disorganized band of fringe oscillators. When the system was self-synchronizing, Fintry found that no oscillator was indispensable. There was no boss. Any oscillator could be removed and the process would still work. Furthermore, the pack did not necessarily run at the speed of its fastest member. Depending on the choice of influence and sensitivity functions, the, couple, uh, the group could uh, run at the pace nearer to the average speed of those in the pack or it could go faster or slower than any of its members. Now this is something that spontaneously comes out of nature and 
you can see that uh, a cluster of pacemaker cells that need to reliably give billions of pulses over the lifetime of uh, a heart could not do so if it depended on a single leader in a hierarchical structure because it would way to be way too vulnerable to the fate of the leader then the whole thing would fail so you need something that cooperates but any member can be uh, compromised and the whole thing would still uh, go on so no hierarchical stuff in there now I make a little uh, jump or a big jump and say consider people on this planet planet to be coupled nonlinear oscillators and that that will maybe seem a little bit uh, far-fetched but um, yeah it is you, you see this sync occurring in in very big to very small things in live things in non-live things so I think it's not such a such a far-fetched assumption then they will inevitably come in sync like fireflies uh, and planetary matter eventually they will operate in unison of course the the coupling in planetary matter is the are the tidal forces so the moon is is yeah distorted uh, deformed a little bit by the tidal by the gravity force of the earth and the other way around you have tidal uh, movements on earth and that movement will cause them uh, to to rotate at the same speed eventually um, so um, if we go back to uh, to Newton he already discovered that the, the rules that apply to the heavenly bodies also apply to an apple falling down a tree and this unification meant a severe blow for the state rulers who had claimed since the Egyptian sun gods that they could steal and murder because they were divinely appointed and aligned with perfectly perfect heavenly bodies while different rules applied for those imperfect serfs groveling around in the dirt and although Newton and Darwin also falls in this category I think waited both waited very long with the publication of their universal theories and they in my opinion did this because they subconsciously realized that it would bring down great anger from those in power and also even from those uh, under power um, um, but it came out uh, eventually and it had, had its effect so another um, in in a teaching company course about chaos theory by uh, Strogatz, he demonstrates how Newton's ideas had profound influence on the thinking of founding fathers like Jefferson, and the whole idea of natural law is is strongly linked to um, to Newton's uh, universal uh, principles of the behavior of matter. Uh, De Jefferson even obtained Newton's death masks. It's not just something that uh, that, uh, that uh, wild speculation. Uh. Now, I would claim that um, currently we have internet and global tourism and global trade, and the coupling between people has become a lot stronger. And like the metronomes on the plank that uh, rolls on two cans, like you saw in the in the movie this greatly increases the speed of getting in sync because the the coupling uh, the coupling if you look at the metronomes the coupling when they are on the same table is much weaker than when they are on the plank which rolls on the on the two cans so if you the the trick with that experiment is to shorten it by uh, increasing the coupling between the metronomes now if the coupling between people is getting a lot stronger because all the communications uh, communication between them then sync will also occur a lot uh, faster between them and what is also interesting in this uh, movie experiment you saw is that uh, it seems for a moment they are uh, are getting in sync and then they move out of sync again so there's a 
counter rally in it uh, and in the end they return to sync once again the, the march is towards uh, uh, ticking in unison and I think that holds also true for sync between people in society uh, what, what it means uh, if uh, people are in sync it means that the same rules applies to the same people and it means inevitably that no situation can occur in which theft, murder and coercion are approved for any element of society because that would mean that this element has different rules than the other elements and if you have strong coupling then they will pull in each other so you cannot have a society where everyone can coerce because then there's no one to be coerced so you can only end up with a situation where no one is coercing and then uh, I would argue that it is in sync and the same rules apply to all elements in society I think also every ruler knows uh, secretly that this sync occurs and is always a threat to pull them in with the rest of the people is because they always wear different uniforms and crowns and scepters and they, they always try to have an external appearance difference that uh, would make a, a point of them not being equal to others but yeah these are only superficial so I think they will be drawn in any way and you can already see that happening because uh, if you look at the economies of uh, developing nations compared to uh, the rich nations then the development developing nations grow much faster uh, on average than uh, the rich nations which are in perpetual crisis and, and uh, riddled with debt and uh, yeah that will line up and also because uh, yeah, labor can move on the margin even though there are always uh, borders with people with guns to prevent movement of goods and, and labor. It is still the case that on the margin people will know, some people will know how to found, find their way around them and it means that labor moves to where it is rewarded most and consumers will try to buy where uh, it is cheapest and that will cause an inevitably equalization um, <clears throat> that is also something that from an entropy viewpoint of course makes very much sense uh, entropy as you know is the second law of thermodynamics uh, states that if you have elements any elements and they can occur in uh, different configurations and the ordered configurations the very special configurations are very rare and disordered are very uh, common then inevitably in time it will move from order to chaos so um, yeah it means if you have a, a, a book of uh, uh, a thousand pages and they are all ordered and you throw it up in the air all the pages are uh, unbound uh, the chances that it will uh, land all in order is very slim there's only one configuration in which that is possible and also this means that for the situation that you have a very much wealth and power with a few individuals and very little with a whole bunch of others is a very uh, very highly ordered state and it's very exceptional and uh, it, it is very small chance that that can persist for a very long time even though we have uh, seen that now for uh, quite a long time but I think a stronger coupling between people will make that uh, uh, converge faster to a more equal equal setting and the, the way I think that uh, occurs is also if that you have pockets of synchrony you saw that 
uh, also in the description I gave earlier of how these whole bunch of oscillators get into synchrony that did you get a, a, a number of them that are already close together in frequency lock up and uh, you get clusters and then the clusters lock up together and with humans you could uh, argue that for example uh, first male and female gender uh, lock up as separate clusters and maybe different races and all kind of superficial differences and after that these clusters will will lock in together so yeah that is a rather optimistic view and even though at the moment it seems like we're moving to an enormous uh, police state with uh, the, yeah, the, the, the TSA taking the diaper, adult diaper of a 19 year old grandmother cancer patient and, and 20 police cops tasering a mentally handicapped uh, boy uh, and well there are lots of examples of, of abuse of power growing at the moment I think in the end that it is like what you saw with his metronomes, uh, there there is a move towards synchrony, but at some local point in time, it can look like it's moving out of synchrony. But if you have enough coupling between the elements and you wait uh, uh, enough time, and of course I don't have a clue how much time that is, then um, then coupling will occur and they will all fall in sync. One final thing about uh, in the book uh, of someone who is not so appreciative of the research to the wonders of synchrony in the animal world. Uh, on uh, May 18, 1993, the tabloid The National Enquirer ran an article titled Government Blows Your Tax Dollars to Study Fireflies in Borneo. Not a bright idea. The piece mocked the National Science Foundations for funding one of Copeland's grant proposals and reported that Representative Tom Petrie, a Republican from Wisconsin, doesn't think the study is likely to be very illuminating and he wants to squash it. Spending taxpayers' money studying fireflies doesn't sound like a very bright idea to me. Now, of course, I'm also not uh, in favor of spending tax dollars uh, on this, but I think it is a very interesting thing to study the synchronous synchrony in the natural world and I think I can also imagine and uh, why the government would be interested in uh, finding out more about uh, spontaneous organization because that is something that is uh, a threat to them and uh, because there is no role left uh, in that situation for them and uh, well they have nothing else to offer so th that is a difficult situation for them. Nonetheless, yeah, I think uh, the, the mankind will move into sync and same rules will apply to everyone and all metronomes will uh, lock up. We have some few uh, fringe elements, but uh, it is uh, not a problem. All right, I hope you uh, found it interesting. The book, uh, once again, uh, Sync by Stephen Strogatz and um, hope you enjoyed it if you have some comments or uh, like to uh, comment on it any other way uh, please uh, leave them in the comment section thanks